relationship is there or not, okay? And, and this is actually, this actually turns out to be true, so the precision of these guys is, I mean, not to be 100%, but at least, um, you know, like about 50%. But the recall share, so the amount, essentially the percentage of the items that we wanted them to make good predictions is relatively low here. So there is with itself, which has a relatively high one, but all the others are 10% or lower. Um, whereas, if you look here at the bottom, these are two, two distributional approaches. You see that they contribute a lot, a lot of the relationships that we're interested in, but the precision is actually just about half the precision of the, of the ontological resources. So, um, you can't really rely on the information that they, that they give you. And, and so, uh, really recently, people have tried to build kind of a hybrid distributional symbolic inference system and, and they essentially had to throw, just a second, okay, just finish that sentence. They had to throw out the, um, the distributional uh, predictions from the, uh, from, from, the, from the system again because they just got too many false positives, yes. Uh, so my question is if this rule holds true even if the data sets are just very, very large. So it's not due to lack of data, it's due to some other inherent property of text yes. corpora. Yes, and, and the, really the reason for that is, is that essentially the assumption that all of the words, you know, that are just around the, the target word that you're interested in, that they contribute to the same extent to the meaning of the word. This is just, you know, an oversimplification. Okay. Okay, so, so, so I think kind of a relatively good way of characterizing the situation uh, is, is that the, if you observe the distribution, you can capture coarse-grained meaning aspects, but not very well, very more fine-grained fine meaning aspects. Which then brings me to, uh, brings me to, uh, I'm using this machine here, right? Uh, which brings me to the, to the real uh, uh, topic of the talk here, namely entities or, or named entities. Um, and so this has been something of, a, of an overlooked area in computational linguistics because uh, most work in, in, in lexical semantics and modeling meaning is, is on, on what linguists call common nouns so, or, or on concepts. But then there is also another ontological category, namely entities. Um, and these are, of course, those things that you find, for example, in Yago or in Freebase or in uh, Wikipedia, essentially, in all of these uh, uh, you know, um, collaboratively built uh, built knowledge knowledge bases that, that people care about these days. Now, um, if you if you think about them in, in in formal semantic terms, in terms of type theory and lambda calculus, for example, then um, you would say that well, those are two fundamentally different things um, because because um, the meaning of of a concept like composer is a set of entities, okay? Um, so it is a function from entities to truth values, whereas the meaning, the, the, the semantics of an entity like Angela Merkel, for example, is really just, just, an, just an individual, okay? Um, so from, from a formal point of view, um, they should be very different now, what would we say from a data-driven and from a empirical point of view, how the, should, they, how th should they look like? Um, and now the interesting starting point of our, of our investigation was essentially that many entities seem to lead some kind, of a, some kind of a double life in the sense that they do have fuzzy properties like concepts. So if you, I mean, if you think back, I actually started with an example that did use entities like Italy, okay, you just know that Italy is somehow you know, coarsely or correlated with, with words like, or concepts like sunny and wine and beach and maybe Rome and Naples. Um, but they also have a lot, of, a lot of precise attributes, which I'm gonna call referential attributes, because those really only make sense if you talk about um, entities that have a unique reference in the world. Um, and they look somewhat different, right? So um, they look, they look something like this, and this is the kind of representation that you would find for Italy in Wikipedia, for example. So Wikipedia would tell you that Italy has a population of 60-something million, an area of 300,000 square kilometers, language that's spoken is Italian, blah, 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 and so on and so forth, okay? 
So it seems here that these entities really have those two different, two different perspectives that come together. And what we asked in our research was the overarching question of whether standard distribution approaches, such as I sketched at the, at the beginning 10 minutes ago, um, are also able to, to model the meaning of, of entities in a similar way as they, as they do for, for concepts. And so what I'm going to talk about um, is, uh, you know, the first study where we model referential attributes of, of entities of now uh, some, some really recent work where we then also model relationships between concepts, concepts and, and entities. Um, but just in case everybody falls asleep at some point, uh, uh, the answer is yes with some qualifications. So, um, works surprisingly well. Okay. So just to kind of make it more, more concrete, what we're trying to do, we're trying to take something like a distributional vector for Italy, just a plane that avoids a vector like this one, and then try to use it to, to predict referential attributes of, of, of entities, okay? And now we actually come to a point uh, which kind of, I think, links up well with the que question that we just asked, which is, okay, now what is, what is the role of, of context here? And so, for example, it's really obvious that such referential attributes are learnable relatively easily, for example, by defining specific specific context pattern or using, you know, the, like open information extraction technology where people introduce something like regular expressions over over partially linguistically analyzed analyzed sentences to extract tuples of of um, related. Just, just linguistic, uh, linguistic phrases. So here's an example. If you want to predict the predict the population uh, attribute for Italy, of course, if you, for example, uh, specify that you are looking for specific patterns like, you know, population of X is Y, or Y has X inhabitants, or over X people live in Y, something like this, if you specify such patterns, then of course it's relatively trivial to extract that information from, from, from corpora. I mean, and here I guess, you know, the answer is if your corpora are big enough, then, you know, one of, one of such patterns will, will match eventually, because, um, uh, I mean, not every text that you might have in your, in your corpus is of course an encyclopedic text, but, but even normal people occasionally talk about, let's say, of, of Italy. But this, sorry? Um, I didn't quite get why exactly you needed the bag of words representation of Italy concept to do that. Okay, so so the the answer really is um, wait. Uh, so what what we do is given the text, okay we're trying to, to predict these properties here, right? Um, and, and so essentially, we already know how to create those vectors here, you know, just by counting, and then the answer is, can we also jump over that gap in some way, okay? Okay, so as I said, if you define such, diff such detailed context, uh, context patterns, then, you know, it's, that gap is relatively easy to, to, uh, to cross, but this is exactly not what we want, but our question is, are they learnable from, from vanilla that of words distributional vectors, so from, from that kind of thing that you see, see down there. Um, <clears throat> and so what we, what we did is we said, okay, let's try and start with the, with the easiest thing that we can come up with, with, which is a simple supervised learning setup which then makes the task related to what, what uh, uh, people in the semantic web community call knowledge base completion. So you have a partial knowledge base, for example, you know the population for a couple of countries, and you want to then predict the, the population or other attributes for, for, for other countries, and that um, is right now a very active area, not the least because uh, many, many companies like, like Facebook and Google and so on are, are highly interested in these kind of things. People had developed very sophisticated methods to look at this, and, but our approach was essentially to, 
to start with the simplest possible setup because we are always interested in not only making something that works, but also understanding what works and what doesn't. Um, so what we did was was simply essentially to to uh, to build a logistic regression model where, or rather, a series of logistic regression models where we learn each output attribute, so for example, the population attribute of these of these countries, you know, as a function of the vector for that country. Okay, so you just observe all the occurrences of Italy in your corpus, then the vector that with the co-occurrence frequencies that you get, these are your features, you put that in your regression model, and the output of the logistic regression model is then you know, the population of, of Italy. Of course, we have to normalize the features for this, but that's just, a, again, a detail, and you should do regularization if you do this. Uh, uh, in order to, to, to keep them all the same. Um, we also did experiment with a simple feed-forward neural network uh, with one hidden layer, because, as I just said, what you do here is you build one model for each output attribute. So you build one model for population, one model for GDP, one model for area size, and so on. But of course, I mean, these attributes are correlated um, and you might believe that, that the model can actually profit from learning those, uh, learning those, uh, learning those models uh, together. And this is essentially what a, what a simple uh, neural network with a hidden layer would do, because it would essentially try and optimize the hidden layer representations so that you know, kind of it can jointly predict what the, what the uh, uh, values of the output features are. So if I understand correctly, uh -huh. which is very like it's very like likely not, uh, it's a regression model. So potentially, in the output column, the population of Italy could be, uh, although it's 61, it might say 59.5, mm -hmm. yes, or something like that, and you would score it accordingly. Say, oh, it's only you know five percent off or something like that. So, so this is not, this. yes. I mean, I, I was going to come to this, but okay. I can already give you give you a quick uh, preview here. So the evaluation is going to be correlation. Okay. So if we have two hundred countries, then we'll train on.